Thank you for the introductions. Um, so my name is uh, Hui. I'm from uh, Fordham University, and this is a collaborative work between me and my colleagues in uh, Northern University and UCLA. So uh, uh, the problem we're trying to solve is with uh, this, this kind of game. They are called multiplayer online battle arenas, um, some typical games of which include League of Legends or uh, Defense of the Ancients or Dota 2. And uh, these two games have become uh, extremely popular nowadays. Um, there are competitions that would give out prizes of millions of dollars um, and attract millions of viewers last year. So, um, uh, so in these kind of games, a little bit about the gameplay, uh, there are two teams, each comprising of five players, and they try to basically beat, beat, a, beat each other up in this uh, map environment. Um, so before the players actually enter the game and start fighting, there is a moment when they already started to um, strategically plan out the actions, and that was in the trapping phase. Um, during this phase, each team would take turn to select uh, heroes or game characters in, on their side. Um, for example, what I'm showing here is uh, the trapping phase of Dota 2 in which uh, there are around 100, um, more than 111 characters or heroes where I can pick, and there are two teams. The name of the teams in this game are Radiant and Dire. So Radiant picked first, then Dire picked two heroes, then Radiant picked two heroes, until, so they, they keep doing that until each team has five uh, heroes. Um, so hero drafting is very important because uh, as with any other team-based games, um, you, or in other team, uh, uh, um, team, uh, team collaboration situations, you need to assemble a team with characters, the heroes that synergize each other, and uh, at the same time counter the, the opponent team's uh, heroes. So our goal in the project is try to recommend heroes to players that maximize the match outcome. Um, a game like this is a zero-sum game, so uh, one team will emerge uh, victory, the other team emerge losers. Um, the challenge in the problems is the fact that there could be um, an intractable number of uh, lineups, and uh, there are also uncertainties uh, in, uh, regarding the opponent's choices. So sometimes you really like a character, but the opponent already selected that character, so you can't uh, make that choice anymore. Um, so, in order to solve this problem, we formulate the drafting uh, phase as a combinatorial game in which there are two players uh, representing two teams, and uh, a game state represents uh, the selection so far. So, it could be a, a vector of numbers. Uh, each of the number can be one if uh, it were, if that hero was picked by Radiant, minus one if that hero was picked by the other team and zero otherwise. Um, the actions in this game are hero picks, and the action will directly change the game state. Uh, the reward functions for the actions would not uh, happen before the complete teams were assembled. So uh, reward function is only defined on terminal state, and uh, it is either the radiant team win or the dire team wins. <clears throat> All right, so um, theoretically, uh, this problem can be solved um, using Minimax. Uh, so uh, this is a traditional AI techniques that try to uh, compute uh, the imme uh, immediate actions based on future rewards. And the way it works is that you start out at a state and uh, uh, sample or and consider all the actions available to you at each of state and move the state forward, which um, results in a search tree. Um, the reward would be uh, assigned at the leaf nodes when there's no more actions available or when uh, you reach terminal state. Uh, actions will be uh, um, propagated up the tree once uh, you reach the leaf nodes. Uh, the only problem with this optimal solution is that um, it's uh, 
in our problem, the branching factor is really large because you can have branching factor around 100 for every level. And in the end, you have a tree that is so big that uh, you can't really compute the whole trees in memory. And uh, there is a really cool algorithm technique to solve this problem, uh, just to, to solve this uh, problem of minimax. And the idea, the key idea of uh, this family of algorithm, which is Monte Carlo tree search, is that um, given such a tree, maybe we don't need to expand the whole tree. Maybe there are only relevant parts of the trees um, that you need to look at. Uh, for example, if there is one branch that you know for sure that you can win, then there's no point to expand that part of the trees. So more resources can be focused on all the more relevant parts. Um, this algorithm uh, that is called UCT um, utilize a bandit algorithm that, uh, criterion that is called upper confidence bar, which Fernando from Netflix uh, mentioned earlier today. Um, the idea is that we put this uh, UCB at every node in the tree to balance between exploration and exploitations. Um, the algorithm is called UCT, and it uh, iteratively constructs a tree by adding nodes to this uh, sam sample tree. Um, there are four steps. Selections uh, is the step that uh, it will traverse from the root node to the frontier of the tree. And expansion is when it will select one of the nodes to add into this tree. And after it has added this node, uh, it moves on to simulation, where the rest of the game uh, uh, is simulated until a leaf node is reached. And once a leaf node is reached, uh, you get a reward. That reward will be propagated up uh, through the tree. Uh, and that is repeated for uh, a certain amount of times, which you can set before the algorithm is run. Um, so one of the challenge in this formulation is how do we assign rewards to terminal tree, uh, to, to, to the leaf node, terminal node. Um, and the uh, uh, idea is really simple. We just use win rate predictor. Um, so uh, we use a win rate, win rate predictor that takes in as input the, lay, um, the formation of two teams, and the output is uh, the win rate, basically. Um, so we can use any supervised learning model off the shell to do that. Um, given enough data, um, the predicted win rates can be reliably estimated. Um, so we did some experiments with uh, win rate predictors. We tried with some uh, algorithm, logistic regressions, gradient boosting, decision tree, neural networks, and we used some uh, traditional uh, uh, measures, performance measures, including accuracy or AUC. And uh, after this uh, study, we found that neural networks uh, use the best accuracy. So we use neural network for our next step of e evaluating uh, the algorithms. Um, to compare the performance of our UCT algorithm, we uh, look into the literature, and apparently this problem is a fairly new problem. So we couldn't find a lot of related work in, uh, in, uh, to solve this problem. And the most really, we only found one which, is, uh, utilize, which utilizes association rules. And the idea is to look at uh, all the uh, games in the past and find out what heroes used to uh, be in the same team. Uh, in the same winning team and what heroes used to be in the losing team and, and use that to recommend heroes to players. So we came up with two more uh, baseline, including highest win rates and some and randoms. For UCT, there are two parameters. Um, the first is the number of iterations when you, we do simulation to construct a tree. So uh, we try with uh, uh, N being the number of iterations from 100 to uh, 1600. And the second parameter is the exploration term C, um, which we determine for each N using grid search and self-play. So the result that you will see in the next slide uh, will be related to, in, uh, to, to this uh, exploration term that we already optimized. And for evaluations, uh, we simulate how the, uh, the selection would work. So there are two algorithms trying to recommend heroes to the two teams, and uh, we let them take turns to recommend heroes, and in the end, when you have the whole uh, teams, we can pass this through the win rate predictor to get, uh, the, get the outcome of the, of the match. 
All right, so uh, this is the result. Um, as it turns out, UCT is really um, not as, uh, it's really strong, and uh, after the number of simulations, uh, it's, when the number of simulation is greater than or equal to 400, uh, we already get a really superior uh, recommendation uh, approach, and uh, it, uh, it's able to beat all the, um, all the baselines. Um, and another thing is that the more simulation you add to the algorithm, the higher win rate you will get um, against all the baseline and also against all the instances of UCT. Uh, for, as for running time, um, <clears throat> given a powerful enough uh, machine, it can be run within one second. So for example here, the number here shows the average run time per pick, and the unit is uh, in milliseconds. So you can see um, at the highest, when you set N to 1600, uh, that's about one second. So, so this, this algorithm is very suitable for, for online usage. <clears throat> um, another nice thing about this formulation of the problem is the fact that we can very easily um, tailor or customize it for other game mode. So in Dota, besides the on ranks mode, we have another mode that's called captain mode. And this is when the teams not only are able to pick heroes, they, they, also, they are also given the choice to ban heroes, right? When they ban a hero, that hero cannot be picked by, by them or by the other team, right? And so uh, how do we change the formulation? We just uh, change the state representation by adding, so uh, instead of just having minus one, one and zero to represent, uh, whether a hero is picked or by this team or another team or not at all, we add maybe two, a number two to represent the band uh, hero. So it's very easy to extend to this uh, match mode. And <clears throat> as it turns out, the performance you know, also uh, is similar to, be, to, to before, except uh, <clears throat> it is better. So UCT is able to uh, leverage on the banding uh, the, the new banding rules and, and can perform better than before. Um, so uh, uh, that's about it. Um, some uh, limitations of the current work. Currently, we do not include any player formations, for example, play styles or history of uh, game results. And uh, so one way to address this is to augment the game state with player specific information. The other alternative is to change uh, the win rate predictors. So we can train the win rate predictors using only player specific informations, and that will give us very customized, personalized win rate predictors that allow us to recommend uh, players, uh, recommend heroes for that specific player. Uh, currently, our experiments was on normal skill matches, so it could be interesting to check out also um, when other skill brackets like novice players or advanced players, pro gamers. All right, so uh, that's our work, and uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Some questions? Everybody is sleepy. I guess I'm the only one between you and Put, so. All right. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, right. If there are any questions, they will be asked at the banquet.